Hi, Keith here. Mark's behind the camera. Today we're going to be painting a rocky ledge. So, rocky eh, rocky shoreline. How's that? Down to the sea. The, uh, the entire subject is actually a, a, a lighthouse. And uh, as a resident of Michigan, we all know, if you're a watercolorist, you have to paint one of these, you know? We've got one or two in the state, right? Yeah. Oh, God. So... <laughs> Anyway, it, I think it's hilarious. Uh, it, you know, if you're not doing a lighthouse, you're not actually a Michigan artist. So there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I think I'll get my big brush out. Yeah, have you done a dog with a duck in its mouth too? That's the other pre Yeah, clip. I'm working. I have trouble with dogs, okay? No, I'm, I'm fine. Um, but and, yeah, that's uh, that's the other one. Yep, that's and the law. Final, and the that's final law. one is, can you draw a car? E, that is my kryptonite. I'll be honest with you. I am not a mechanical kind of guy, you know, when it comes to painting. And I'm not sure, but I don't think watercolors is one of the best mediums for painting uh, vehicles, unless they're completely rusted and up on what? I've seen some. Uh, I've seen blocks. some weird concept art, or like, you know, here's a final rendering that it's been done in. I know acrylics and oils for sure. See, that's what I mean. That's a, it's a perfect medium for markers, for pen and ink, watercolors. No, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm I'm whiting. I'm whiting. Yeah, I'm whiting. These uh, I'm using a clear liquid, so that <laughs> you cannot see. Uh, thus leaving the whole shoreline white. I'm wetting the entire surface because I'm going to put down. A very soft, um, very soft coat of color. I'm going to have a couple different colors that are a lot of fun, so that rocks don't have to be gray or brown or you know you can have a little more fun with this. Uh, I like using uh, kind of dull violets. Uh, right now, I'm. Am I? Can they see what I'm doing with the? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just curious. Um, I'm just uh, making a kind of a violet using, uh, again, magenta and ultramarine blue. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some uh, orange to this. I'm going to really gray this down so it's kind of a dull, much duller purple. All right, good. It'll still be purple when I'm done, but it's not going to be pretty. All right. Yeah, because we don't want a pretty painting. No, That'd be come ridiculous. on. No. Once I get the dead weeds and stuff in there, it'll be perfect. But it's a very um, kind of a dull gray. I don't have a good word. But it's sure a lot better than just gray. So. Well, yeah, because it's not... A true gray. It's got some color in it. Exactly. And it makes things a little more fun. Um, so right now, I'm just kind of going right down the, the shoreline here. And uh, wherever the rock is, that's where I'm going to paint some of this, uh, this color. This uh, grayish violet. All right. So at least you'll know where I'm working. Yeah. Right. <laughs> follow the yeah. Follow the pretty color. Follow the gray into the sea. All right. Um. So I want to talk about uh, a set of colors that I absolutely love. Uh, I've been using a, a particular brand. It's uh, M Grand, and they have a beautiful set of quinacridone. Uh, colors that I've been experimenting with. And one of the colors I really like is Quinac... Quinac I hope I'm pronouncing this right. I'm not kidding you. Uh, Quinacridin Rust, which is very much like a burnt sienna, but bolder. It's got more color to it. It's vibrant. And I don't know what what makes Quinacridin paints um, bolder, but it works. So I'm going to add that color, this Quinn Rust, to my palette. And I'm literally going to mix in a wee bit of the ultramarine blue again. 
I'm going to grab a little more of the violet, or I'm sorry, a little more of the Quinn Rust. And I'm going to kind of wet this down a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to kind of go in where we've had the violet. I'm going to add a little more, a little more color to it now. And that is this uh, brown I'm adding. Which is a little bit of the purple and a little bit of this quin. And, I, and like I said, for some reason, this color, I don't know the properties. If I uh, have a one of my students who actually, I think she's a scientist because she, she knows how to break down the colors really good. Um, I'll have her tell me why quins are so awesome. But as you can see, it's still wet and soft. I'm not doing, really not doing detail yet. I'm just kind of adding, throwing color into the, into what we're doing here. All right. So at this point, I do have to let it set up because after this, we're going to start doing uh, detail, breaking the rocks up so that they, doesn't look like just one big lump of color, but here we go. In the meantime, I think I'm going to put a little color down for my uh, for my lake. It is a great lake uh, watercolor, so not the ocean. But what I'm going to do is so don't paint any salt. Yeah, no salt. Um, I'm just gonna start filling in this is just giving me something to do while i'm while i'm letting that uh shoreline there break up now great lakes they have some good stormy water so i kind of like that i'm leaving this whoa this little gap of white here you can kind of see what i'm doing i'm trying to make it look like the water is kind of splashing up a little bit. So I kind of wet it, and as you can see, now I'm using my dry brush, just lifting the color that's that I just painted below, and just kind of pushing it up into those white areas. Make it look like splashes. This is a patented technique. We should work on those. Patents? Yeah, patented, patented techniques. Mm -hmm. Probably harder to do than we think it is. Well, I don't know. They did Zeng Zentangle or whatever it's called. Uh, we used to call them telephone doodles, and uh, now they're now it's a patented technique that uh, only registered uh, Zentangle uh, teachers can uh, can use. I just think it's kind of amazing. Um, all right, so again, I come in. So as you can see, what I like to do is I'll start with one color, then I'll I'll bring in another color to make it just a little more interesting. So right now I went back to the ultramarine blue because my sky is going to be not too cloudy. So I want some of that blue to show up. And in this new format that Mark and I are working in, we are trying to get the object lesson done within a shorter period of time. So we're working on a 15 to 20 minute kind of lesson. So, bite-sized tidbits that are more focused on a specific aspect of the painting. Exactly. Like just the rocks or just the water or just the sky, just the trees, just the birds, just the building, just the this. Just, just, just the just beak. The, just the beak. Just the beak, possibly. The eye. Just the eye. Um, Creepy. All right. I just got to crack the whip and keep them on... Yes. Don't don't paint that. That's that's next episode. That's next week. <laughs> anyway,
So, again, you can see how I kind of left the white. So I can always go in and, and mess with it. But I kind of like that idea that it's kind of waves uh, breaking against the uh, against the shore here, against these rocks. And then also, I don't know if you can notice, but I'm quietly kind of putting in just a little bit of reflection of the color, that brown. Putting a little bit of that into the water so it kind of looks like it's reflecting a little bit off this... Uh, uh, Michigan uh, water. See how I said Michigan water? Mm -hmm. I, the king of Michigan, Keith McGuire. You're and, like the Aquaman of Michigan. Well, what I'm trying to do is, is rescind any rights of any water from any of the other states and uh, that Michigan should be the sole proprietor. Actually, don't you know Nestle owns all the Michigan well, water? What? It's not fair. I have worked very hard as the king of Michigan. And if you go on my, uh, what is it, LinkedIn? You got one of those? I, I do. I don't ever do anything with it. People are always congratulating me for stuff I have no idea. Yeah. Congratulations on your job uh, yeah. anniversary. Yeah, you've done. You've what been job do I have? Yeah, I'm not working. I'm an artist. What are you, nuts? Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I always like that. So one of my job descriptions is I'm a graphic artist. I do watercolors. I paint. I teach. And I'm the king of Michigan. Nobody has complimented me on my, I think now, eight-year term as <laughs> king of Michigan. And uh, so, you know, you get a chance. I'll just, have to look you up. Just a shout-out. All right, so as you can see, I kind of got this more or less roughed in. I got some nice uh, color here. Lots of, we're getting a little drama, drama, okay, drama mean, a little drama going in the water here. And then we're going to, I'm just going to stop there for now because I want to go back in and I want to start breaking up the rocks. What? Um, so again, I am pulling out my... Quinn Rust, like I said, for me, it makes a great substitute for burnt sienna. Uh, but what we want to do is basically, I kind of like outline the rock, the bottom of the rock, okay? not We don't outline all the way around, as you will see. Then I also like to put in little dark colors, little dark, um, I'm sorry, little dark sections. But as you can see, what I do is I'll kind of outline the rock, then I'll kind of bleed the, bleed the color up a little bit into facets of color. We don't want to, we don't want to take away all the color from the um, original coat of colors. Okay, so. We're just kind of lifting the color up a little bit here and there and creating these facets on the rocks so they're not all um, just one value. All right, so I also like to uh, mix up the mix up the shadows and the color. So. I like using ultramarine blue with this um, Quinn, Quinn uh, Rust, too, because I, I get some neat effects. So as you can see, a lot of times it's... I'll work with these kind of like little triangles. Because that kind of gives it the feeling that's the bottom of the rock or underneath. You can see underneath the rock. And then just kind of bleed some of the color up and over. And so it's a little bit of negative painting. Where you do the color behind the, the next rock and you just keep coming up then. So as you can see, 
just by adding a little bit of color up here, I just created two rocks there. So let's let's take it up again. Again, you don't want to do the top. You don't want to outline it all the way around. Bad. You want a hard line? Get into pen and inks. Yeah. Well, I do like doing some hard line, but um, the idea is that uh, we're not like drawing all the way around this thing. It is not a, you're right, it's not a pen. Excuse me. Oh. Okay. I have these things. Uh, I don't know if you can really see it very well, but I do kind of. I like to kind of draw out my my image because I don't want to have to guess too much as I'm working. For me, I can work quicker. So I do, I kind of detail out my image as, you know, I kind of draw it out a little bit so I can see where I'm at and what I'm doing. But it's not, you know, you don't have to. And if you'll note, I kind of, I love busting up the rock and that it, the rock has some definite, um, Bigger, smaller. Don't make everything real even, because that just looks odd. You want uh, you want a, a really good chunk of randomness in the, what you're what you're doing, because if you kind of line the rocks up too much, what you're building is a wall. <laughs> All right, so grab a little more. A little more violet. And what I'll do too is I'll go in areas where I have painted where it's still wet. And again, I will attempt to vary the color a little bit inside that little area. You, what you want is some very good dark darks here and there because that's what really makes them kind of pop out a, a little bit more. You don't want every rock to be deeply outlined. What you want are areas of darkness. They sound like Satan. All right. Okay, how am I doing time-wise? You're just about up to the 20-minute mark. Uh-oh. I think I've also... I feel what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to finish one, one section here. Because I think I've made my point. Then the next next time you see me, the rest of it will be done all the way around, all the way down. So again, if you don't, you know, if you don't have the Quinn, you know, don't worry about it. Use the burnt. Use the burnt sienna. Use uh, I like uh, for. Deeper values or darker shadows. Um, try to use some uh, uh, indigo. That'll get you some nice dark areas. See how I just keep keep working my way up. Keep going. Keep going. No, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna end this. <laughs> Was that your subtle? 
Subtle hint. All right. I know we've told you guys we're trying to do shorter videos, but that was all just a facade. Wait. So see how I come behind each rock and I, I just kind of bleed it up a little bit. That's what gives you the next layer of rock going up. So. Next episode, you're only allowed to paint one rock. No, the next episode, these will be all done. Because the next episode, we're going to work on uh, uh, the sky will be painted. Uh, we're going to do the tree line around the, the lighthouse. And, and I'll have these rocks finished up so you can see what they look like. But for right now, see, I, can, I love this stuff. I'm sorry. I love breaking things up. Like I said, don't be afraid to throw other colors in here too. Blues and uh, uh, reds. Uh, might even have a little bit of the, throw some green in a little bit too, you know, just uh, some vegetation. But for right now, I'm going to let this sit and we'll call it quits. Here, what do you think? Uh, yeah, sounds yeah. good to me. All righty. So I will uh, see you next time. Uh, Mark, any, yeah. so any suggestions? Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure if you want to see more content like this, you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that fun stuff. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or requests for future videos. Ooh. Uh, be sure to check out rkmcguire.com where we have, you know, Another repository of all our videos, uh, links to prints for sale, material lists, uh, all kinds of good stuff over there, class schedules. And, of course, head over to Facebook if you're not following us there already and join the Friends of R.K. McGuire uh, where you can post your paintings and have Keith take a look and some of your peers take a look at them too and ask questions and just get engaged a little more personally than you can do anywhere else. So uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it, and stay tuned. Thank you now. Bye.